affiliate marketing and organic brand building. Hello everybody, I'm Ricardo Gorski and I will make a quick introduction to everybody. Ladies first. <laughs> One more time, okay. Uh, hello, hello, my name is Zelena Zhirkovska. I'm a PR professional, blogger, and influencer. Hi, I'm Daryl, CEO of Wicked Games. Uh, I make games. Uh, my name is Seva. I am the managing partner of a communication and branding agency, Wondel Digital. Ricardo Gorski, I make videos about Cyprus and I help people and businesses move to Cyprus. Okay, we are talking about affiliate marketing and organic brand building today for a few minutes. And to me, organic brand building always was very interesting because I, I love the idea of putting content out there into various different platforms, social media platforms, and attracting attention just by telling a story. And I never really liked to run ads just because of the fact that it was outbound marketing, whether it is for getting attention, subscribers, or selling a product. So with organic brand building, you're building a brand, either it's a personal brand or it's a actual brand with a physical product, with the service product, whatever, and you're getting inbound leads. And I think everybody agrees that when someone comes to you because they want something, you have a higher leverage in converting them as clients or as a follower than when you're knocking on doors. So that is my most general opinion on organic brand building. When it comes to affiliate marketing, I think they go hand in hand. We talked about that just a few minutes ago. And that is basically, I like affiliate marketing if I don't want to make the logistics or the infrastructure of having my own product. So as an influencer for me, for example, or someone else with attention, you could basically advertise their product. So I would now give the word to uh, you guys and maybe you tell me your opinion on whether or not you agree with that, what, what you think. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm all about organic brand building. Um, for me, I, you'll, if you hear me talk ever, I'm talking about branding, branding, branding ourselves, branding what we do. Uh, in terms of affiliate marketing, that you, your brand also extends to that. So if you're looking for someone to become an affiliate, you want them, you want their personality, their, their values to reflect your brand as well. So I think it's, it's very important in, when you're looking for an uh, an affiliate marketer to choose someone that that copies your your values and your brand. Uh, I'll talk more about organic branding later. Yes, but, yeah. I completely agree with uh, Daryl, but I think this is the final step. The first one is understanding uh, that this product is really good and the solution is great. So before me as influencer, before other companies came to me and uh, asked uh, for cooperation, for collaborating, uh, I see is this product is really good. So the first step is, uh, uh, is everybody has to understand that you have to just create a good product and then it will be uh, going successful uh, regarding case of growing uh, organically. And the second one is also important. You have to uh, understand how to work with influencers because I don't know your uh, experience, Daryl, uh, when uh, somebody working with you, but uh, regarding me, uh, as you also mentioned about values. Uh, some companies that came to me uh, are not relevant values uh, compared to my side. So maybe it has to be, uh, they have to, you know, uh, prepare for working with influencers more, just to have pre-work before. That's actually very interesting because you have the influencers and also you have the um, basically the product provider, Daryl, and also an agency owner right here. So you're, in some cases, the middleman very often. So I think your view is very interesting as well. Uh, well, so uh, if we talk about, for example, affiliate marketing in iGaming particularly, so there are two, uh, two, two big tiers that all the affiliates could be divided into. On one hand, you have the 
uh, bottom funnel uh, affiliates such as um, email marketers, deal and coupon websites, uh, retargeting affiliates, all kinds of that. Uh, um, that's where more tangible things like coupons, discounts, uh, bonuses, and stuff like that come into play. Yeah. On the other, uh, on the other side, you have the uh, top funnel uh, affiliates. So top funnel uh, affiliates is already uh, influencers, uh, reviews, re review websites, uh, all kinds of uh, social communities uh, that uh, the brand is building. And that's where the brand power comes into play. So that's what we mean when we're talking about connection or, of affiliate marketing uh, with branding. So what is happening now, uh, what has been happening for the last like years, is that most companies in iGaming uh, were spending more with uh, bottom funnel affiliates, which brought uh, a very high competition. And uh, if you look, for example, at uh, affiliate marketing, at the, C at the cost per traffic, the CPA in affiliate marketing. So with these bottom funnel affiliates, the CPA is really like low. Yeah, so it kind of brings you cheap traffic. But then, when you see, when you have, a, when you look at the, uh, for example, new users which coming to your uh, uh, platform, you can see that these bottom funnel affiliates drive very low value, uh, tend to drive very low value in terms of uh, new users. So for new users, the CPA is really, really high. So that's where, for example, if you're looking for new users, you need to go to the top funnel affiliates, which are influencers, as we mentioned, and that's where you start working with your brand. That's where you start building brand awareness. So without, without each other, these affiliate marketing and brand building are not basically working. So we are talking about conversion rate, right? We could, for example, on one hand have a platform, an influencer with a lot of eyeballs, but the conversion rate could be very low. And on the other hand, if you have an influencer, an SEO website, uh, every listing kind of platform, and you have the right audience to target, you will have a much higher conversion rate. So even influencers with, let's say, six, seven figures followers, if their audience is something that is not interested or coherent with the product, iGaming for example, maybe even it's in a geolocation where there is the product not allowed, then you cannot work with that. The, the cooperation with that influencer is basically a try without real success. Yes, can, so can you give a, an example that you actually did in the past few weeks in the iGaming industry uh, with an influencer with a corporation? Yes, yeah, so we had this uh, tricky, tricky project with a company in the Netherlands. So uh, when you are working with influencers, it has uh, some really like geographic peculiarities. For example, um, we were like we, we, we were developing uh, an influencer strategy for a company in the Netherlands, and uh, part of this strategy was approaching Twitch influencers to uh, co collaborate. So uh, um, it, it is true that uh, Netherlands is uh, the market with very high restrictions on gambling and betting bi businesses. So uh, um, it, it takes a lot of effort uh, to, uh, uh, to, to approach the influencers. And of course, you always have to, um, uh, to um, uh, consider all kinds of men uh, mentality differences, cultural differences, yeah? So, uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, the, 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 the big markets like Sweden, where you're basically allowed to advertise anything the, uh, and everywhere, yeah, if you have a license. Uh, the value of influencers in such markets are very low because you don't need to go to influencers. If you have the money to invest in the media, then you're welcome to advertise in the media. So uh, it, it, it really, it's really different like market by market. And you mentioned a very interesting topic that is important for me and for Elena as an influencer, especially in the iGaming industry, is the restrictions. Because you cannot just talk about some certain topics online without um, getting a risk of being censored in some platforms because there are certain guidelines. So it's also very important to sit down with the agency or with the product owner to really create a smart marketing strategy an organic brand building strategy because you can also create Twitch streams, as you said, short videos, YouTube videos, and that is everything specifically to each um, platform. And it, it, it's important to decide where you will actually create the content. Daryl, did you um, have a very 
one one of a kind cooperation with an influencer in the past? Uh, yeah, actually, I did. Uh, this is a company, a previous company I worked for. It was our, our first foray into exploring organic branding. Uh, I found that I jumped on a, a forum called Casino Meister. I introduced myself to the community there and had had some great conversations. I think it's very important to have these conversations with the community uh, just to build your own brand awareness. But what I did was uh, I went to uh, ICE a couple of years ago and I specifically went to the Casino Meister gathering that coincides with the ICE event and introduced myself to people. Uh, in particular, there's one... Uh, can I mention his name? I suppose I can. Uh, one guy, Dazza G. I was familiar with his streaming product uh, and I knew that he was, a, he was a big player on this Casino Meister forum. I introduced myself to him. Uh, the first, I, first thing I did was introduce myself as Daryl. G'day, pleased to meet you. Turns out Dazza G's name's Daryl as well. Oh, sorry, Dazza, if, you, if you're listening. Uh, I don't know if that's a secret or not. But we got on famously and uh, I was able to convince him to just take a look at one of our games. And once he reviewed it, it, creating a, it created a feeding frenzy online of people wanting to review our product as well. And it led to many, many uh, favourable reviews and streamers that were playing our game without any cost to me. And all that all was done was achieved through... Uh, socialising and, and talking to the right people. So that was an amazing experience for me. Mm -hmm. Alena, um, because you're an influencer on the one hand, on the other hand you're also working in an agency and also providing uh, services and organic branding services. So how would you see it from both sides? Because you're basically on one hand and on the other as well. Do you have a specific example in the past that you work with a company as an influencer or with other influencers that um, sticks out? Uh, yeah, I think that this example is happening right now because uh, when I uh, came to the atmosphere, I was not a blogger. I have been a blogger since uh, 2021. So uh, this cooperation uh, created uh, in my uh, working process when I was already a per director. So um, I can give you one example about uh, expanding brand awareness. When uh, I was in Amsterdam uh, at another event this year, we uh, decided to make some photo with our new merch. And uh, I was on the square and making some photos. And uh, people standing there stopped for a while and asked me, what is this T-shirt, where they can buy it? What is this design? And uh, they see the Cups Let's Atmosphere and they could not believe that this is not a fashion company because our merch is really unique right now. Our designers are really cool and they did a great job. So. Uh, I posted on my social media and my friends and my uh, just followers asked me where it is. So then I just uh, move uh, one step forward and i um, thinking about what if you just put it on your wallpaper? Yeah, just a picture with you, why not? Uh, and uh, my uh, friends and people who, with the, whom I'm chilling, they ask me, where did you buy it? Please, can you just send me? So this is not of a relevant audience, of course, but uh, not of them, all of them, but most of them uh, maybe not even thinking about uh, a company atmosphere, but now they are thinking about it and they just make some research. So uh, as soon as we understand how influence I can be uh, using my Instagram, we just uh, use it in our uh, working life like when I am working with Atmosphere or in other companies, it doesn't matter. So as soon as I get another more crucial examples, I will give you uh, once again. You can just uh, go follow me on my Instagram and LinkedIn also. Of course. That's actually a very interesting example because we're talking about organic brand building and we had two brands in that scenario you just said, and that is one, the merch, the products, the clothes, which people liked on one side, and on the other hand, it was your face. Because people trust you, your followers on Instagram trust you, and that is something that is that closes the circle, what I said in the beginning, where I said that running ads may work, yes, but running ads is not 
as a trustworthy marketing strategy as working with someone's face. If you go on Instagram and you say, that's a nice shirt, it's so much different than the brand of this shirt runs their own marketing strategy, even if it's a billboard, because there are so many other t-shirts. But if you say this shirt is good, good, then it's your decision and it's, it's a USP in that marketing strategy. That it's not enough for now just to say it's uh, t shirt is good. I think uh, people can, uh, people want to see how you can wear it, that you really use it. So uh, when companies came to me and they suggested me collaboration, they see my, for example, because I'm a blogger on Instagram, they see my Instagram profile and they say, please make a photo in your own style. We don't need that you have to make photos in our style, just being you. So that one, when I integrated this photo to my uh, image, to my profile, uh, People trust me because they see how I can use it. So it's just not, uh, you know, a free sample that I use to my, uh, I don't know, where to garbage when I just get it or sell it on eBay, for example. I just use it and I love it. So this is uh, the main difference for now. I love working with brands that give me freedom. I totally agree with you because when I create a certain type of content, like I do all the time with voiceover or I create a story and then suddenly I create a piece of content for this company in cooperation as an ad, it's just unnatural. And then I think it's contraproductive because if they give you guidelines, you have to do this like this, this and this, but it's not really you, then the audience understands it. And nothing is worse than when the audience thinks that you're trying to sell to them something. I know influencers, they create so many ads every day. I like this, I like that, and it's totally fine for them. But in my opinion, it's not really a sustainable marketing if you only sell to people. There are so many people that give value for free and then you can ask something after giving value for some time. Yeah, and uh, um, I just wanted to, to add on what uh, the previous speakers have said that uh, it's good when um, the product is actually inspiring the influencer to create the content. For example, we had uh, uh, we, are, uh, we have been running um, influencer campaigns for Apple in a few markets, and uh, the, like this is one of the products which is really inspiring, inspiring for uh, for influencers. Uh, this is one thing, and the other thing is that this uh, co co collaboration with influencers is always about finding balance, leveraging balance between the need of marketers and brand managers to control the content and the need to provide uh, more freedom to loosen the grip on the content because it's always you know like a little bit tricky so you want to align all the activities with, with the branding strategy and uh, then the, the 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 blogger or the influencer has or her or his own view on how the the product should be presented so that, that's always a matter of uh, like discussions and the proper approach for me, as a uh, game provider, where I'm not dealing directly with the customer, my, my, I'm business to business, and then that business deals with the customer. So how do I advertise or how do I get our image across to the end user when I'm not directly associated with them? That's, they're the challenges that, that I face, and I think organic, brand, organic branding is very, very important for me as a business to business operator rather than trying to convince a consumer to play our product. So yeah, I put a lot of, lot of thought and a lot of uh, emphasis and strategy on our organic brand building. So I can't, I can't throw advertising dollars to them because I don't know where they're playing. Yes, I think you mentioned something important. It's, it's just a different way of thinking. It's very creative work. It's, it's very emotional work. Uh, you have to build a relationship to the audience. And I talk to many people of my team that are more developers, more mathematical, more rational. And when I talk with them about marketing strategies, I ask them, OK, what do you think is a good video idea? And then they come up with very, very uh, rational ideas that I, as an emotional person, I'm just like, no. <laughs> it's like. No one, no one, it, it doesn't have a hook, it, it, it's, it's a storytelling and there are people who are naturally good at that and there are people that are naturally good in other things completely. So um, I think that's the beauty when it comes to building a team. Some people have strengths in area A, others have strengths in area B. 
For me, for example, I'm good at storytelling, but I can't edit videos. If I edit the videos myself, it looks like an ad for, for a toy. So I need someone who is good at video editing. You do your videos yourself, because I saw some of your videos, they are like very aesthetic, very um, feminine, very music, very, very emotional as well. Do you do them yourself or? Yeah, this is my strength. I don't trust anybody to use my Instagram. This is just my point of view. So maybe I would like to work in with the team, but I would like to make all of my decisions by myself. Yes, you definitely have um, the overview of what you will upload. I hope that my editor doesn't upload something weird. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions? Yes. No, I'm so sorry. Confused. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. One question to uh, Aleona. Okay. Uh, I used to, well, I'm still working as well as an influencer because I'm a singer, host, and it's already 17 years I'm doing this. And influencing is just automatically our job. <laughs> uh, so one question, uh, I know that everybody has its way of influencing. Uh, maybe this gesture, this signature will work for one person, but that will not work for the other person. So I would like to um, ask you, uh, if you consider this as a personal question, you can just skip it. But what kind of keys are you using to influence? This is the question one. And the second one, uh, what normally you do when you are getting offer to influence and to um, say good things about the product that not inspiring you, not just appealing you and doesn't say anything to you. So is there any techniques, signatures that you are using to influence? Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. I would like to say that you are so beautiful actually. So thank you so much. Uh, I would like to start with the second one and uh, answer you that uh, I don't work with products or services that not excited me. So uh, my followers know that I'm honest with them and I should, uh, my priority being honest with myself, the first. So I just don't want to work with uh, somebody who just not relevant to my heart. I know that it's something like dreamy, it sounds like dreamy, but it's, it's true, it's my life. And and uh, the first question you said, how to influence? Uh, just to see my own opinion. I, uh, I posted whatever I want. So if you just go to my social media on Instagram, you see that this is just lifestyle. I, uh, I'm showing my life as it really is. I'm not lying. So I'm not going to golf club if I don't play golf, for example. And I don't want to eat uh, in the in high restaurants if I don't have enough money. So this is it. And people, actually, if you, if you just think that they don't understand and what lie and what is not, they really do actually. So being honest just and being you, and you said that you are a singer, right? So you just have to uh, show them all the processes behind, in the process, after, what you think about it, how do you feel being a singer? So you will surprise how many people would like to uh, be in touch with your own life. So for me, this is just uh, a trend right now, being honest and being organically. So this is just like the name of our topic right now. If you don't mind, you can just come to me after the uh, stage, yeah, and we will talk more. So Ricardo, maybe you can just also give some tips uh, to the question. Yeah, my number one tip is, uh, I think the question was also how to grow, right? So like how to get more eyeballs. And for me, what was a game changer, like so crazy is uploading every day, uploading every day. And I know how you feel because like a half a year ago, someone said that to me as well. And I was like, okay, I will do it. But I didn't do it. And then I started uploading 
every day. If you go to my Instagram, like one day ago, two days ago, three days ago, and this is how I gained, like, I just reached 200,000 on TikTok yesterday, and I'm now at 2,000, 205,000, so I'm growing like crazy. And it's really, I think, uploading every day. And finding the balance between quality and quantity. So sometimes when you sing, maybe you're not hitting the tone all the time. Upload it. Why not? Three years ago, you will watch that video and you will laugh. And maybe this video goes viral. So you never go know what goes viral and what not. One more thing that just... And use perp- reels. Reels. Reels yes, are yes, the yes. best. Yeah. Reels, yes. A lot of people make stories every day, but the stories only get seen by your followers. So in order to get new people, you need real. Um, yeah. I think uh, we'd rather go to another question.